Living Former Monarchs Who Retired Queen Elizabeth II considered abdication to be a dirty word. She remained on the throne until her death at 96 and left her son Charles to wait 73 years to take the job he was born to. But abdication is not so despised in other countries. In recent decades, more monarchs have elected to retire and pass their thrones on to the next generation, thus allowing former monarchs to spend their golden years relaxing and enjoying their ridiculously well-funded retirement plans. Let's meet the world's six living former monarchs and find out what ex-monarchs do in retirement. From studying fish, to living in a log cabin, to getting in to even more scandals than they did on the throne. Akihito, former emperor of Japan, was born in 1933. His parents, Emperor Showa and Empress Kojun, had already welcomed four daughters, but Akihito was the first son. Because the chrysanthemum throne is passed only to males, Akihito was the heir. The couple had one more son and another daughter, totaling seven. At seven, he attended school with other children. During U.S. bombing raids on Tokyo in World War II, the Imperial children were evacuated. Under Allied occupation, the prince was tutored in English and Western manners. In 1953, he represented Japan at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II of the UK. He studied political science at Gakushin University and graduated in 1956. At 23, he met Michiko Shoda on a tennis court. His family considered her too low-born, so she was sent away to Brussels. The prince was determined to keep in contact with his girlfriend, so he wrote to King Boutouin of Belgium. The sympathetic monarch passed messages between the couple and later encouraged Emperor Shoa to allow them to marry. He argued that if Akihito was happy in his marriage, he would be a better emperor. In 1959, Michiko became the first commoner ever to marry into the Japanese imperial family, breaking more than 2,600 years of tradition. Their relationship was called the romance of the tennis court. Akihito's mother was especially opposed to the union and drove her daughter-in-law to depression with her insults. The Crown Prince couple made state visits to 37 countries and had three children, Norohito, Fumihito, and Sayako. Akihito said the formality of his role made him feel like a robot. He desired to be closer to his people. In 1989, Emperor Showa died at 86. Thus, Akihito became the 125th Emperor of Japan. As a constitutional monarch, his role was representative and ceremonial, with no position in government. He issued several statements of remorse to Asian countries for their suffering under Japanese occupation in the past. And he fulfilled his desire to bring the imperial family closer to the people, making the institution incredibly popular. He and Empress Machiko visited all 47 prefectures of Japan and are well regarded. While visiting the site of a World War II battle, he offered prayers and flowers at memorials not only honoring fallen Japanese, but also Americans, Koreans, and locals. In 2011, in the midst of the earthquake, tsunami, and the Fukushima nuclear crisis, the emperor made a rare televised address, encouraging his people not to give up hope and to help each other. After suffering prostate cancer and other health problems, Akihito passed the throne to his son. In 2019, the 86-year-old emperor abdicated after 29 years on the throne. No Japanese emperor had abdicated since Kokaku in 1817. Akihito is now titled Emperor Emeritus. He and Empress Emerita Michiko moved into their Takanawa residence. In 2021, Akihito celebrated his 88th birthday, becoming the longest living Japanese emperor in recorded history. He still enjoys tennis. He also continues his interest in marine biology and discovered two new species of goby fish. In 2022, Akihito was diagnosed with heart failure.
His son is now Emperor Naruhito because his only child is a daughter, Princess Aiko, and the succession does not allow women to inherit. His heir presumptive is his younger brother, Crown Prince Sumuhito, followed by his son, Prince Hisahito. Albert II, former king of the Belgians, was born in 1934. His father, Leopold III, had become king of the Belgians four months earlier following the death of his own father, Albert I. His mother, Queen Astrid, was a Swedish princess. Albert was the couple's third and youngest child. He had an older sister, Josephine Charlotte, who later became Grand Duchess of Luxembourg, and a brother, Boudouin. Therefore, Albert was not expected to become king. When the prince was one year old, his parents were involved in a car crash and his mother was killed. Belgium was invaded by the Germans during World War II. The royal children were taken to safety in Spain. They returned under German occupation to continue their education. When the Allies landed in 1944, the royal family were taken back to Germany. They were liberated after a year in captivity. Because King Leopold had surrendered to the Nazis, he was not popular and was not welcome back in Belgium. So the family lived in Switzerland for five years. King Leopold remarried and had three more children. Albert was close with his stepmother, Mary Lillian Beals, and called her mother. In 1950, the royals were allowed to return, but Leopold was pressured to abdicate in favor of his 20-year-old son, Boudouin. In 1958, 24-year-old Prince Albert traveled to the Vatican for the coronation of Pope John XXIII. There he met Italian aristocrat Donna Paola Rufo de Calabria. The pair had a whirlwind romance and became engaged. They were married in 1959 and had three children, Philippe, Astrid, and Laurent. King Boutouin married Spanish aristocrat Fabiola de Mora y Aragon. She suffered five miscarriages and the couple remained childless. Throughout his brother's 43-year reign, Prince Albert was the heir presumptive. He supported his brother on state visits and took an interest in Belgian society, culture, and enterprise. He set up the Prince Albert Foundation to promote foreign trade. In 1993, King Boudouin died of heart failure at 62. The throne then passed to his 59-year-old brother, Albert II. As a constitutional monarch, he has little political involvement. In his 2012 Christmas speech, he sparked controversy by making political comments, and the monarchy's role was brought into question. In 2013, Belgian sculptor Delphine Buell summoned the king to court to prove that she was his biological daughter. She claimed that her mother, Baroness Sibylle de Selys Longchamp, had an 18-year relationship with Albert. In the midst of the scandal, the king announced that he would abdicate in favor of his son, Philippe. The 79-year-old monarch cited health problems as his reason for stepping down. It took Delphine seven more years in court to get the former king to submit to a DNA test, but in 2020, it was announced that she was, in fact, Albert's daughter. She was given the title princess, but as she was born after Albert's other children and is illegitimate, she is not in the line of succession. Still titled His Majesty King Albert II, the former king and his wife retired to Belvedere Castle, three other lavish homes in Paris, Rome, and on the French Riviera, and their yacht. The couple struggled to maintain their lifestyle on the $1.2 million annual pension from the government, but their requests for a larger allowance were met with derision. The Belgian royal family has faced other scandals for attempting to avoid tax. King Philippe's daughter, Princess Elizabeth, is next in line to the throne. Beatrix, former queen of the Netherlands, was born in 1938. Her father was German prince Bernhard of Liep Biesterfeld. Her mother, Juliana, was crown princess of the Netherlands, heir to Queen Wilhelmina. When Beatrix was born, it was expected that a brother would follow and displace her in the succession. Juliana had four children, all girls, so Beatrix remained second in line to the throne. 
When she was two, she, her mother, and baby sister fled the Nazis and spent five years in Canada. They returned after the war and the princesses were enrolled in public school. Beatrix was 10 when her grandmother abdicated and her mother became queen. Now crown princess, she attended Leiden University and graduated with a law degree in 1961. On New Year's Eve 1962, she met German diplomat Klaus von Amsberg at a dinner party. They were fifth cousins twice removed. In 1965, the couple announced their engagement. The Dutch were outraged as Klaus had been a member of the Nazi youth and the German army during World War II. The wedding sparked riots in the streets, smoke bombs were thrown at their golden carriage, and a battle broke out between protesters and police. By 1967, the fervor was quieted when the nation celebrated the birth of the couple's first child, Willem Alexander. Two more sons, Friso and Constantine, followed. In 1970, Beatrix began preparing more intensely for her future. She made numerous trips abroad, including a controversial visit to the Soviet Union. After her father's acceptance of a million-dollar bribe caused his disgrace, she initiated reforms in the royal household. In 1980, Queen Juliana abdicated and Beatrix was sworn in as queen. As a constitutional monarch, her duties include signing legislation before it becomes law, formally appointing officials, receiving ambassadors, and awarding honors and medals. In 1983, the succession law was changed so that women have equal standing. After her mother's folksiness, Beatrix was seen as far more reserved and formal. In 1988, on Queen's Day, while walking through a public market, a man called out, give us a kiss, girl. She obliged with a hug and two kisses. A photograph of the embrace was widely published and enhanced the Queen's popularity. The encounter was likely staged. In 2002, Prince Klaus died at 76 after a long illness. His passing was widely mourned. 18 months later, her mother, Juliana, died at 94 after suffering years of dementia. In 2009, a man intentionally crashed his car into a parade in an attempt to harm the royal family. Five people were killed instantly, and several more were seriously injured. The queen made a televised address expressing her shock and condolences. In 2012, her second son, Friso, was buried in an avalanche while skiing. He suffered massive brain damage and lived in a coma for 18 months. His mother and his wife, Mabel, visited him daily, but he died in 2013, age 44. That year, Queen Beatrix announced her intention to abdicate and place the responsibility for the country in the hands of a new generation. After 33 years on the throne, Beatrix handed it to her son, Willem Alexander, who is the current king. Her title became Her Royal Highness Princess Beatrix. The former queen continues to undertake some royal duties and is a patron of many charitable organizations. She lives in the small, moated Thrakestein castle. Her son has three daughters, and after his reign, the eldest, Katharina Amalia, is expected to become the Netherlands' fourth queen regnant. Juan Carlos I, former king of Spain, was born in 1938 in Rome. His grandfather, King Alfonso XIII, had been forced to abdicate in 1931, and the Spanish royals fled the country. Juan Carlos's father, Infante Juan, Count of Barcelona, was the king's third son. A few months after Juan Carlos's birth, his father's eldest brother, Alfonso, Prince of Asturias, who had hemophilia, bled to death after a car crash. Second son, Jaime, had already been forced to renounce his claim to the throne because he was deaf. Thus, Infante Juan was the heir to the defunct throne. Juan Carlos's mother was Maria de las Mercedes de Borbon to Sicilies. When the prince was 10, his father persuaded dictator Francisco Franco to allow him to return to Spain to be educated. He struggled with dyslexia, but graduated and went on to military academy. 
When Juan Carlos was 18, he and his 14-year-old brother, Alfonso, were playing with a revolver. The gun was accidentally fired, and Alfonso was killed. Juan Carlos studied at the University of Madrid. In 1962, the prince wed Princess Sofia, daughter of King Pavlos of Greece. They had three children, Elena, Cristina, and Felipe. As General Franco aged, his grip on Spain weakened, and many in the nation pushed for a return to monarchy. Franco had no sons of his own, and he disliked Enfante Juan. So, in 1969, he declared that he would skip a generation and make Juan Carlos his successor. The prince publicly supported the fascist regime and appeared with Franco in public, angering many who hoped for reforms. But the prince met secretly with leaders of the opposition. He competed in sailing in the 1972 Olympic Games. Franco died in 1975, and Juan Carlos was sworn in as King of Spain, thus restoring the monarchy. He gave up the authoritarian state and introduced democratic reforms. In 1977, Spain held its first post-Franco democratic elections. In 1981, conservative members of the military attempted a coup in the king's name. That night, Juan Carlos gave a televised speech, renouncing the coup and asking the people to support the legitimate elected government. Thus, the coup lost public backing and was foiled. Juan Carlos's swift actions gained him significant support among liberals. The Socialist Party won the 1982 election, and Felipe González became prime minister. Over the next 14 years, he stabilized Spain's democracy. Thus, Juan Carlos took a back seat in politics. On paper, the Spanish monarch holds a great deal of political power, but they no longer leverage it and now hold a largely symbolic role. The king is commander-in-chief of the military and gives a speech each Christmas Eve. They must give royal assent to laws passed by the legislature, but Juan Carlos never used his veto power. In 2005, he gave assent to legalizing same-sex marriage, a law many thought he might object to on religious grounds. Juan Carlos and Queen Sofia also took numerous state visits. The king was highly regarded with a 75% approval rating and was shielded from media scrutiny. That was until a 2012 elephant hunting trip in Botswana. The king was forced to resign as president of Spain's Worldwide Fund for Nature. And as the nation was in the midst of an unemployment crisis, the cost of the trip was widely criticized. Next, his daughter Christina was caught in an embezzlement scandal. In June 2014, with his reputation tarnished, Juan Carlos announced his abdication. He was the fourth European monarch to do so in just over a year, following Pope Benedict XVI, Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, and King Albert II of Belgium. He stated that he did not want his son to wither waiting like Prince Charles. He became King Felipe VI and his daughter, Leonor, the new Princess of Asturias. The abdication was met mostly with appreciation for Juan Carlos's role in ushering in democracy and optimism for Felipe's future. In 2018, the former king's alleged mistress, Corena Zuzain Wittgenstein Sein, claimed he received kickbacks from Saudi Arabian investors, purchased properties in Monaco under her name, and gave her 65 million pounds as a tax haven. King Felipe declared that he would renounce his inheritance from his father, and that the former king would lose his public allowance. It was next discovered that several members of the royal family had been using credit cards paid off by unknown foreign entities. The scandal triggered tax fraud investigations in Switzerland and Spain, and a media firestorm. In 2020, Juan Carlos fled the country to an unknown location. He was eventually located in the United Arab Emirates. There have also been allegations that Juan Carlos had several extramarital affairs and fathered at least one other child. One book claimed he had 5,000 mistresses and was a sexual predator. 
In 2022, the former king paid fines to the Spanish tax agency and the cases against him were closed. He returned to Spain for a visit, but continues to live in Abu Dhabi, enjoying his hobby of sailing. His wife, Queen Sofia, remains at Zarzuela Palace in Madrid. The former king has put the Spanish throne in serious jeopardy, and recent polls show the country is about split 50-50 between keeping the monarchy and wanting a republic. Hamad bin Khalifa al Thani, former emir of Qatar, was born in 1952. His father, Khalifa, was a younger son of the crown prince. His mother, Aisha, died shortly after his birth. Hamad graduated from the British Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in 1971. He was then commissioned as a lieutenant colonel in Qatar's armed forces. In 1972, his father Khalifa took power from his childless cousin and became emir. Now Crown Prince, Hamad was promoted to Major General and Commander-in-Chief. Hamad married three wives, Mariam, Moza, and Nora. And between them, they gave birth to 24 children, 11 sons, and 13 daughters. Emir Khalifa was hesitant to develop the nation's oil and gas production for fear of changing Emirate society. But in 1992, he was persuaded to hand over the day-to-day -day running of the nation to his son, making Hamad effective ruler of Qatar. The prince took charge of the oil and gas, but still disagreed with his father. In 1995, while the emir was away on vacation, the prince staged a palace coup and took control, declaring himself emir. He froze his father's bank accounts and the former king remained in exile in Switzerland. A counter coup backed by neighboring Middle Eastern powers failed. The emir leveraged his nation's vast oil fields and the world's third largest gas reserves to transform Qatar into a major world power. The small nation is now one of the richest in the world, and the emir is the 10th wealthiest monarch with a fortune of about $2 billion. The Qatar Investment Authority has acquired a number of foreign businesses, including iconic department stores, Harrods in London, and Printemps in Paris, plus a 75% stake in Miramax Films. Hamad is an avid sportsman and promoted athletics in Qatar, including hosting international events in soccer, tennis, racing, and other sports. He won his bid for Qatar to host the 2022 World Cup. He helped to fund the Al Jazeera News Network. He set up the Qatar Museum Authority, which is now one of the world's biggest buyers of contemporary art. Hamad and his wife, Shika Motza, patronized several elite American universities to open campuses in Doha, including Carnegie Mellon, Georgetown, Northwestern, Texas A&M, and Cornell. He donated $100 million to U.S. victims of Hurricane Katrina and helped secure a ceasefire in the 2006 Lebanon War. He provided troops to reduce killings in the Syrian civil war. He was one of the few Middle Eastern leaders to maintain friendly relations with Israel until 2009 when he severed ties over the Gaza War and sent aid to Palestine. He provided support to oppose rebels in the Libyan civil war. In 2013, Emir Hamad handed over power in a televised speech. He is now referred to as the Father Emir. His fourth son from his second wife, Sheikha Motza, Sheikh Tamim, is the current Emir of Qatar. Jigme Singi Wangshok former Dragon King of Bhutan, was born in 1955. His mother was Queen Kaesan Choding. His father, Jime Dorj Wangchuk, was the third Dragon King. He was democratically minded and gave up much of his political power and decreed that the National Assembly could remove him with a two-thirds majority vote. Prince Singyi attended school in Bhutan, India, and England. At 16, he was made chairman of the National Planning Commission, 
The following year, in 1972, his father died of a heart attack at the age of 44. 17-year-old Singi thus became the fourth Dragon King. In 1979, he married four sisters, Dorj Wangmo, Searing Pim, Searing Yangdon, and Sanje Chodin, all of whom became queens. Between them, they have 10 children. Rather than a palace, the king resided in a log cabin. He shunned expensive vacations, preferring to trek around his own country and meet his people. The king developed a philosophy of gross national happiness, focusing on his people's well-being. He encouraged development across Bhutan, instituting potato farming in the north and citrus orchards in the south, which brought in good yields and income. Roads, hospitals, electricity, communications, safe drinking water, and other infrastructure was built. A free education program increased literacy. The king also preserved the natural environment with a number of wildlife sanctuaries and traditional culture with a national institute. The king built up friendly relations with its neighbor India, the UN, and other nations. Rather than private planes, he travels with an ordinary passport that says he is a government employee. In 2006, after 34 years on the throne, King Sanghi announced that he would abdicate in favor of his eldest son, Jume Kashar Namjil Wangshok. At the coronation in 2008, former King Sanghi placed the raven crown on his son's head. The new king continued his grandfather and father's work by ushering in the Constitution of Bhutan in 2008. Former King Sanghi remains incredibly popular. The nation celebrated his 60th birthday in 2015. He continues to live a quiet life in his log cabin. One other former monarch just missed making this list. Pope Benedict XVI was elected in 2005. In 2013, he became the first pope to resign since 1415. He was succeeded by Pope Francis and spent the remainder of his life at a monastery in the Vatican. He died on December 31, 2022, at the age of 95. In next week's video, we'll meet the four living former monarchs who did not leave their thrones by choice, but were kicked off when their monarchies were abolished. Want even more tea on history? Check out the History Tea Time podcast. Don't want to wait to see the next episode? Patrons get exclusive early access to all of my multi-part series. If you would like to join my Patreon and help me make more fascinating videos, click on the link in the description. Thank you for watching.